Hi everyone, um, thank you for joining us. We're going to give it another two minutes until 11.02 to just make sure that everybody who is registered has joined uh, the conference. So we'll be starting at 11.02. For those that are just joining now, we're just going to give it another minute um, for, for a few more participants to join um, and we'll get going at 11.02. Okay, so we're going to kick off now. Um, thank you everybody for joining the webinar today. What we're going to be covering is job advertisement training and specifically a large part of that is hiring for gender balance. Um, my name is Gemma Lloyd and I'm the CEO of Work 180. So here's the agenda. So first up, I'll take you through a little bit about Work 180 so you have some background and context. We're then gonna go through gender neutral language and different tools that you can use to ensure your job advertisements are written in a gender neutral way. We'll run through the structure of a job ad and terms that you can use. My favorite part of this webinar is then when we actually go on to real examples from actual employers. Um, we've got some terrific ways that employers uh, use, uh, sorry, structure their job ads and different words they use. We've got some extra tips at the end, followed by a Q&A. Now, regarding the Q&A, there is a chat box on the webinar, it's on the right. So if you uh, have a question that you would like answered at the end, please put it into the chat box. Um, following that, I'll uh, address the questions that you may have. Just so you know as well, a recording of this webinar will be sent out to all registrants. So first up, a little bit about Work180. So for those of you that don't know, Work180 is a platform which provides job applicants with a transparent directory of employers committed to equality. So specifically for women, they can research employers, what they have to offer around their commitment to equality. And we, from an employer perspective, and we work with them to attract a higher quality and quantity of women applicants. So with the platform, the reason why we're able to attract such a high quality and quantity quantity of women applications is because we provide an endorsement which has a trust factor, a heavy focus on employer branding, we go to market in a very targeted and niche way. I won't go into that now um, as this webinar is obviously not about that but please feel free to connect later and I can talk you through how we go to market to attract candidates um, and we also help um, employers re retain their talent with education and best practices. These are just some of the endorsed employers. So we work with everything from tech to, to finance, the fire brigade to university sector. 
the training that we're going to do now around the job advertisements, it's really applicable no matter what industry that you are in. And whether you're in a heavily male dominated industry or you're trying to attract candidates in non-traditional roles to whether you're in a heavily female dominated industry, it doesn't matter. These um, principles that I'm going to run through are applicable to everybody. And if you apply these types of principles, these are just some of the results. Well, one example of a result that you can get. So BAE Systems, um, a very non-traditional sector, engineering and defence, um, their conversion through Work 180 from application to hire was eight times better than Indeed, five times better than LinkedIn, and four times better than Seek. And those are specifically for women in those non-traditional roles. Okay, so why are we here today? Diversity is the number one global recruitment trend. So we've got close to 80% of talent acquisition and HR professionals focusing on diversity and attracting more diverse talent. Why is this statistic important? Well, it's important because what it shows us is that we're operating in a highly competitive market. So we really need to make sure that we're putting our absolute best foot forward when trying to attract a more gender balanced workforce. This is an oversimplified roadmap for success before we go into the job ad training. So if you're hiring for gender balance, um, you really need to be hitting these three, three things. And actually it's not just gender balance, it's really when you're hiring to attract the best talent full stop. So you've got to reach the right audience, you've got to have a great employer brand, and you've got to have great job ads. If any one of these three things is missing, you won't have success or as much success as what you could. So for example, if you are reaching the right audience and you have great job ads, but you don't have a strong employer brand, people aren't even going to click on the job ads. Or if you've got a really strong brand and you've got great job ads, but it's not getting in front of the people that you want, Likewise, you're not going to get the applications. And what we're th focusing on today is that third piece of the puzzle. So if you're reaching the right audience and you've got a strong employer brand, people click on the job ads, but your job ad is terrible, you're not going to get the application. So how do we make sure you're putting your best foot forward in terms of your job ads? Now in 2018, PwC did this research study on what women want. So, and these were the top three results. You've got career growth, competitive wages and benefits, and flexible working. The reason why it's important to recognize these three, three things when we're hiring for gender balance is you want to make sure that you're covering these three things, either in your job ad or in your employer branding. I've got some really good examples of how other employers are actually demonstrating these things in job ads. And I think it's actually really fair to say that although this research study was conducted specifically for women, um, needless to say, I think this is really what everyone wants. So you can't go wrong by highlighting these things in your job advertisements. Let's get into it. Let's talk about job ads. Okay, so how to encourage women to apply. The first thing is not to require every skill under the sun. Um, it's amazing how many times we see job ads and it's got a list of 10 to 15 dot points of what that employer requires as a skill. Ideally, you want a maximum of five requirements, so no more than five dot points. Um, less is better. Um, now, um, the reason I think where companies or sorry recruiters and talent acquisition often go wrong with the these dot points is they're forgetting the key phrase which is job advertisement it's not um a um a a job description sorry i think um i've actually i'm just going to pause for a second uh, because the slides don't seem to be showing. Uh, my sincere apologies for that. Um, I'm going to have a play here. Um, I forgot to press a button. So here's the good news. 
the good news is uh, the main slides that you want to see are yet to come. And uh, the other good news is that we will be sending these slides out at the end of the presentation. So you will have full access to everything that I've spoken about before. And thank you those for putting it in the chat box there. So back to the, back to the presentation. And again, my apologies for that. So um, don't require every skill under the sun, as I mentioned. So it's a job advertisement, not a job description. So uh, when we're attracting talent, the way that we want to look at it is we're really marketing out to that talent. The next is to talk about the three things that I mentioned in the previous slide. So that's career growth and mentorship, flexible working and how your policy works, and then also sharing parental policies. Um, as I mentioned earlier, some really great examples coming up from other employers, how they talk about these three things. And lastly, we want to write gender neutral job ads. So gender neutral language. So job descriptions do have subtle gender stereotypes. Universities such as the University of Waterloo and Duke University found that male dominated roles predominantly, such as software engineering, for example, tended to have masculine coded words. And when we talk about masculine coded words, their words are what we see here, independent, lead, competitive, assertive, determined, analytical. And then when we look at feminine coded words, here they are on the right hand side. So words like responsible, connect, dedicated support. Now, follow up to the research that was done that roles in traditionally non, sorry, typically non-traditional sectors for women, such as your software engineering, not only use the masculine words, but the follow-up research confirmed that these words were less appealing to women. So what you want to do is de-bias your job ads. So how can you make sure that you're replacing some of these masculine words with some of the more feminine coded words or making sure that you have a really good balance throughout your job ad of both and making sure that your job ad is gender neutral. I would recommend that if you're rec if you're hiring in non-traditional sectors such as your engineering or areas, industries with low female representation to, um, to push more on the feminine coded side rather than the gender neutral, but typically you want it in the middle there. Now, you may be wondering, okay, that's great. I can't go through all of my job ads and try and make sure that I'm using all of these types of words. So this is where the tooling comes into play. So we've got three tools here. Um, we've got Textio, Be Applied and Gender Decoder. So the way that all of these work is that you copy and paste your job ad into the tool. It will scan your tool and then tell you which words are more masculine and more feminine and often, depending on the tool, make suggestions to swap swap those words out. Now, Textio is a very comprehensive tool that goes above and beyond just using gender, um, telling you about the language that's used. It also deconstructs the job ad for you and tells you about corporate cliches that are used, etc. However, the price tag is pretty high. So if you've got a if you've got a good budget within your organisation, Textio is the way to go. And um, however, what we've got these other two tools here, Gender Decoder and Be Applied. Both of those are no cost. Gender decoder is very, very simple. So the best bet here, the one that I would certainly recommend is the Be Applied tool. So Be Applied is no cost. It's still comprehensive. It will outline those two words, um, sorry, the, the two types of wording, the feminine and the masculine, and give you a score as well. I'll, send, I'll happy to send out the link to the Be Applied tool at the end of the webinar. Now let's go into deconstructing the job ad. So now that we've got the types of words correct, it's all about how we structure it. Typically a job ad structure will look like this. Job title, who we are, the role, required skills, culture benefits apply now. That's fine, but let's take it to the next level. Let's reframe some of these things to the job seeker and make sure that your ad is the most appealing that it can be. 
So I'm just going to pick out a couple of these things to talk about. Um, the who we are piece. So instead of just saying who, like who we are in a really sort of dry way, if you can talk about who you are in the way that you create, if in the way that you make impact, that's a really exciting way to describe your company. I've got some really good examples of that coming up. Instead of saying the role, which just sounds like any other average job ad, what you want to say is how you'll contribute. How are you going to make an impact? That's how you get people that are really passionate about the particular job that they're going to do. So everyone wants to go to work and make a difference. Let's reframe the role to how you'll contribute. Required skills. Um, just a different way of framing is about you. It makes it more personal. Likewise with culture and benefits, what we offer you. That you phrase, that personalization is really important. And then finally, apply now. Instead of saying apply now, which is very, very one way, it's saying you send us your CV, we're going to assess you. Continuing the conversation, however, that's more two way. Come and have a chat to us. Let's see if we're a good fit together. You're going to get people that really um, respect themselves, care about their profession if they're continuing a conversation with you rather than just sending in an application, which again is very, very one way. Now we're going to go into the my favourite part, which is actually sharing some real examples from employers. And I will just say before we go into these examples, when you're constructing the job ad, so I'm taking literally sort of the best what there is out there. You pick and choose what's more, most appropriate from you for you and for your company. You're not going to be able to include all of these and you might end up writing a novel if you do, um, but certainly um, at least one or two of these takeaways you can, you can put into your job ads. So who we are, instead of saying who we are, it's a social impact. So Atlassian, I absolutely love how Atlassian describes the impact that their organization makes. So for those of you that don't know what Atlassian does, they essentially develop software for other IT professionals. And instead of saying that, what they do, they describe the impact that they have. Um, so our products are revolutionizing the software industry and helping teams collaborate and craft the magic that delivers the best work. Think NASA launching the rover on Mars or Cochlear gifting those born deaf with the ability to hear. Your work directly impacts the products used to advance humanity. Now that's a company people want to be a part of, that impact piece. Um, another example, so that's how the company makes impact. Now you want to talk about how the individual will make impact. So here's another great example from Zero. And again, as I mentioned, these slides are going to get sent around um, after. So you will have an opportunity to read through all of this. But Zero is hiring a salesperson in this particular job ad. And uh, instead of saying um, you will sell accounting software, what they do is they bring, they try and um, spark passion into that role. So um, at the end here, we make it easier for small businesses to grow through our beautiful accounting platform so they can focus on why they started their business in the first place. With us, you have the chance to make an impact on the lives of our new customers globally. Now, with the Work 180 research that we've done and the job ads that are put on our site and the companies that advertise with us, what we see is that organisations who either have a strong social mission at their core or talk about social impact in their job ads or their employer branding receive much higher application than those who don't or a much higher quality of applications. So no matter you know, what your business is, there is a way that you can describe the impact that you have. If you struggle in that area, maybe what you want to do is actually highlight another way you, you create impact or another area of corporate social responsibility. So for instance, it may be a charity that your, that your company um, donates a percentage of profits to. Um, just give people a reason to get passionate about your organisation. The next is about you. 
I love this example from Arc Group and Arc Group are an IT company and um, you know which is often very hard to, to hire women and recently they hired three women through Work 180 in the IT area and it's not surprising because the way that they describe their job ads is awesome. So they have what you'll bring and they've got a very short list of uh, dot points there but then there's this sentence not a perfect skills match tell us what you're interested in you might have a skill we didn't realize we needed so as long as you're keeping up to date with the latest tech we're interested so you're really casting a wider net then of the types of applications that you're going to get through people won't read those dot points and go oh i don't quite have that one I'm not going to put in my application. I'm probably going to get rejected. Instead of at the end just saying, "Look, tell us, tell us your skills." You never know, and particularly being uh, if you're hiring for a lot of roles, you may get an application that isn't right for that particular role, but is okay for another. Or you can talent pool as well. The next is about what you offer. So if you have um, an industry leading policy um, or even just a really strong benefit, it's a great thing to talk about that in the job ad. Lange Rourke framed this really well and they hit two of the three things that I mentioned earlier that women are really interested in. So we've got, um, first of all, the career development. So they talk about in that first paragraph having a specialized learning and development programs. And then in the second, paragraph they talk about their industry leading paid parental leave policy which is 26 weeks of paid parental leave now that's absolutely outstanding there's certainly a pay setter um but even if it's half of that it's still a great thing to outline as a benefit pwc as well now there's something that i the one part i really love about this pwc job ad is when you read it, you feel like you can go to work and be yourself. And when hiring for gender balance, that's really important and particularly in non-traditional roles, or it's not even just gender balance. If you're, you know, when hiring for any diverse, to expand the, the diversity of your candidates, the one thing that you want is people to feel like they can be themselves when they come to work. The way that PwC have actually been able to communicate this in this particular ad is here. So, um, our state of the offices and the second, sorry, before I read it out, the second nail they've hit on the head is around the flexible working piece as well, which is one of the three areas that women look for. So our state of the art offices embrace the very best technology has to offer. And each person has access to flexible work options. Our dress policy is flexible too. So you choose what you wear based on the kind of work that you do in your team and your clients. So saying that you choose what you wear, that certainly says to me, come and be yourself to work. Um, the next part is talking about diversity and inclusion, but they specifically outline what that means. So a lot of organisations do have a diversity statement on their job ads which is great. It might say something like, um, you know, we uh, support diversity and inclusion. We encourage all people to apply. PwC have taken that to the next level. And they talk about their employee-led diversity networks, for example. So cultural, ability, LGBTI or gender equality networks that they have. Um, so how can you be more explicit in your job ads? Now, there seems, I just want to go back because I have missed a slide, which is um, was a key one. And I just realized it's this Lend-Lease example as well. Um, one of the three things was around flexible working. So um, a lot of companies have a flexible work policy, great, but it's not necessarily enforced. And there's a lot of skepticism with job seekers around flexibility and companies saying they support flexibility, but they actually don't. Um, the flip side of that is that sometimes employers are very large or they um, and some departments support flexible working and some don't. So what Lendlease have done here, which is fantastic, is they've been really specific on what flexible working actually means in this job ad. So working 22 and a half hours a week with the flexibility of executing the role three, four, or five days. 
depending on your preference. So that's just a fantastic way of framing it. It really says, come and talk to us around what's going to work for you. Um, and really demonstrates that lend lease are walking the talk when it comes to flex. So if you have a genuinely flexible role that you're advertising for, don't just say that we support flexibility. Say what that means. It means you'll be able to work from home, for example. It means that we're happy to provide you with compressed hours or a job share arrangement. Now, the final thing um, that I'm going to show you is a Work 180 original now. Um, this um, particular, um, particular aspect that you can incorporate into job ads has been extremely effective. So uh, it's including a testimonial, a job seeker testimonial actually in your job ad. Um, if we think about when we're going to buy a product, so say for instance, we're doing online shopping, we will always, nine times out of 10, read the reviews. Now, when you read the reviews, what do you trust more? Do you trust the review that somebody has given or do you trust what the brand has written about themselves? You always trust the review. So by incorporating a real employee testimonial, it, it's gonna show that you're actually genuine, that it really is a great place to work. And research actually shows that job seekers trust the voice of the employee three times more than the corporate brand. With the, with the testimonials, just make sure that um, it is by somebody who is in that particular role or the department so it's more credible. Um, you don't ideally want an HR person's testimonial unless it's for an HR or talent acquisition role. Um, if it's hiring for software engineering, get an engineer's testimonial. Okay, so finally, apply now or continue the conversation. As I mentioned, say continue the conversation. It's that two way, um, we're gonna talk to each other rather than just one way. And the world is changing in terms of um, people applying for jobs. Job seekers do assess the employer, employers. It's not just employers assessing employees anymore. Finally, Setting expectations, love this example by the NBN. So quite often job ads don't have a close date on them or um, they do have an application close date, but they'll close sooner because they found the right person and it's not really a great candidate experience. What NBN has done here is not only respectful to the job seeker, but it also makes sure they're getting applications in quicker. So it's super smart. NBN. What it says is NBN is a fast moving organisation with lots to deliver. So we may not always wait until the job ad expires before reviewing applications. As a result, you should submit your application as soon as possible. So I just, I love how they frame this, putting this at the end of the job ad, you're gonna get applications in quicker. So just a little bit about what I've touched on before, making sure you set expectations with the job seeker. So either have timelines of when the applications close and stick to them or do what NBN has done. I've also seen companies put the steps in the application process on the job ad. Um, depending on how long the job ad is, that can be really effective. Um, I think any information that you can provide the job seeker is good, particularly um, if you have a, a process which might take say two or three weeks to get back to a job seeker after they've submitted their application, it's really good to say that in the actual job ad itself, please expect a response within this time timeframe. Um, Work 180, um, we were really lucky actually to get an amazing, uh, amazing employee because um, they had applied for another organisation, which was very large, amazing brand. And, um, but that company took three weeks to get back to that job seeker, whereas we got back to them straight away. And actually three weeks later, they had a response saying, we would like to interview you. Um, and if that job seeker had known it would have taken three weeks, potentially they would have held out from accepting the role with us. That was the feedback that they actually gave us.
So some extra tips here. Sign up for your for job alerts or know what your competition, how your competition is wording their job ads. It's not a bad idea to read other employers in your sector, how they're wording things, how they're selling their organisation and how can you take things up a notch? What do you have that's um, even better than they do and how can you really sell that? So when people are comparing your job ad with somebody else's, yours is framed in a better way and sharing and engaging with your employer brand as well. So what are you putting out there on LinkedIn, on social media? What employee stories are you sharing? Um, it's super important, particularly when hiring for gender balance, you need to be out there talking about the women in your company um, and the opportunities that women have for career progression. This is another tip for the end, um, salary negotiation. Um, we all know there's a pay gap, so I'll avoid asking what salary the candidate is actually on. Um, they could be getting underpaid, so instead of that, ask what they are actually looking for instead. Um, if you even need to do that, I mean, my view is you have salary, the same role should be paid the same, so, um, you know, you shouldn't even be asking those questions, but if you do need to, which I understand in some circumstances, ask what they're looking for. The thing about providing a good candidate experience is that candidates may know each other, even if they don't have, even if they don't get the role, um, they may recommend, they may say to a colleague um, who might be somebody going for a job in your company that, um, that they had a really good experience. They didn't get the job, but you know, definitely apply for this for this organisation. It's it's really important, particularly in those non-traditional areas where a lot of women network, construction, software engineering, for example. Finally, when you've written a job ad, ask what your employees think, and particularly what women think. So if um, if you've written a job ad and you really want to attract more women or the best talent go and say for instance it's in a, an operational position go to a, a female operations manager and say is this a job ad that you would actually apply for and you'll be amazed at what feedback they you know a, a lot of the time we've actually gone and done this type of research with employers that we work with and they've said no that part there really puts me off and in fact it's actually um, they've missed a really exciting part about my job um, so making sure that you're getting that feedback from the actual people in the job, not just the hiring manager. Okay, so um, that brings us to the end um, of, of the webinar or of my piece talking. So I'm gonna go into the chat box now um, and just answer, answer the questions that we have. Okay. So, um, there is a question around, um, around here, around in job ads, should you actually um, use large blocks of paragraphs like you're telling a story or dot points? Um, definitely both. I mean, I've seen job ads which are just purely blocks of paragraphs and, um, and it really makes it hard to consume and hard to read. So if you're using dot points as well, um, that will make sure that it's broken up. It's easy to get the main, those main sort of points across. Another question is around, um, if you could just choose one thing to enhance your job ads, what would that be? It would be the testimonial, definitely. So if you can put an employee testimonial um, either at the top of the, your job ad or at the end of the job ad, that's really going to have that human connection. And it, like I said earlier, it just builds that trust with job seekers. Uh, 
Um, yes, we are going to be sending the slides across um, after and it is being recorded as well so that everybody will receive, um, receive the recording. Okay, um, the question here is, you've mentioned masculine and feminine words, but are there actual gender neutral, neutral gender words identified? Well, the good thing is if you go, if you use um, Textio, it will provide you suggestions for gender neutral words, as well as feminine words and masculine words. Um, I can't remember off the top of my head that if the apply does it, um, Gender Decoder doesn't, um, but those, but certainly Textio will. You can you can sign up for a fourteen day free trial, so I recommend that you that you do that if you want to know the those gender neutral um, gender neutral terms. Um, another question here is in regards to video. Has this been shown to improve the interest from women, even if a man is in the video? Um, I think um, with any type of content, whether it be video content or photo content, it's really important to have um, different types of people represented in the video and photo content. So, so yes, women may be interested, but you're going to have more women interested if you're representing women in your organisation. A really good example is we did a video for Brisbane Airport Corporation. They were hiring for uh, one of their maintenance, airside maintenance manager roles. Um, it was a video, this particular video, they had never had, sorry, taking a step back, they put a job ad out on SEEK. They, had, they didn't have one woman apply for it. We did the video and we included both men and women, but predominantly it was women in the video. Um, that got shared out. They received a over 170 applications, but they actually hired three women from that. Um, so it, yes, it's it's really important to to um, have balanced representation. Um, so, uh, there's another question here around attracting gender diversity relation to male and female. Do you have recommendations for how to attract those from the LGBTIQ plus community? Um, so the wording, the the wording in job ads, we talk about feminine and masculine coded words. So first of all, you want to get gender balance. Um, regarding specifically LGBTI, there was a real. There's an example um, that we mentioned that PwC. Uh, explicitly say they have an employee-led diversity network for LGBTIQ plus community. So if you have certain initiatives that support different groups in the community, absolutely say that in the job ads. The other thing that we do is we will promote um, different initiatives by our employers um, so it might be they had a celebration for Pride that will push out through social media and on the platform. We also had a fantastic quote from uh, an employee testimonial example. So there was a woman at Microsoft. She gave us a great quote around feeling being able to go to work and be herself and talk about her wife and her kids. So if you have somebody that's comfortable, you know, sharing something like that, include that in the job ad or include that in your employer branding. Um, is there any research, another question here, is there any research into placement of ads on gender, i.e. print versus digital, career sites versus seek? Um, so certainly, um, I mean, the reason why Work180 exists for employers is because we attract more women than platforms like seek. So um, there's the example that I just gave for Brisbane Airport Corporation, BA Systems, the conversion through Work 180 is four times better than SEEK for attracting women specifically in engineering roles. Um, I think if you're um, if you're trying to access a network that you haven't accessed before, you need to cast a net and go somewhere somewhere that is specifically focused. Um, 
on Seek or on other job platforms as well, those who are endorsed by Work180 or have the Work180 endorsed employer for women badge, will use that endorsement on other platforms. And so we've seen companies like Philips, for example, um, put that on other job ads and as a result of just having the endorsement, receive more female applications even via other platforms. Um, print versus digital. Um, I think digital's pretty much the the way to go with with um, with job ads. I'm not sure about the gender balance print versus digital, but I would I would always um, go digital. Um, okay, so another question here is for male dominated roles like solutions architects, how do we attract more women to apply since it's very technical? So um, yes, uh, when you're trying to attract more women in areas that are highly competitive, so a solutions architect role is a highly competitive role, you need to, there's a couple of things that you need to do. You need to make sure that you're accessing um, that talent pool, first of all. So the way that we do it is that we have partnerships with different industry associations, various women in technology industry groups that share jobs and content through to their niche audiences. So that's the first one, first piece. The second is having a really strong employer brand um, to say that you support, why are you a good place to work for women? Um, if you have a female solutions architect in a particular role as well, can you get a testimonial from them to talk about why they in particular like their job working for you? So it's, yes, it's very competitive, but it's just about making sure you're hitting the right audience with the right messaging and using real employee stories to demonstrate why women should be applying for you. Even if you're proactively sourcing candidates, the employer branding is extremely important. So if you're a female solutions architect, for example, women in tech are getting contacted on LinkedIn 10 to 20 times a week by recruiters. So you need to be thinking, what is it that is gonna make that person turn around and want to have a conversation with me? Why are they gonna engage with me? Well, they're going to engage with you if they feel like you've got a genuine commitment. They're gonna join your company to, and they're gonna have an equal opportunity. And moreover than that, the examples that we've highlighted in the presentation today, how are they actually making an impact? How, how will they make an impact, sorry, at your company? Um, a couple more questions here. So, um, how does women respond differently to a job ad than men? Um, I think what the question is, the question, I'm not a hundred percent sure. I mean, what that question means. Um, I think what it's saying is going back to the dot points that we mentioned, so not requiring every skill under the sun. And the second piece is making sure you have gender balanced language. So um, there are masculine coded words, there are feminine coded words. So how are you getting a good mix of those to make sure it's appealing to everyone per the, per the research that's been done. Um, also with corporate social responsibility, actually that's another piece. Um, Research has shown that women are more attractive, attracted to organisations that have a strong corporate social responsibility focus. So you want to be talking about if impact is at the core of what you do, or if you have other initiatives around how you're giving back to charity, for example. Um, there's another question around um, sales roles for the chemical industry. Um, sales, surprisingly enough, I mean, I've spoken a lot about tech, um, tech and engineering and such, but sales is another one of those um, particular areas that is very hard to attract women for. Um, it's, it doesn't matter, I guess, what industry that you're in. Um, it's the absolute same principles that apply. So job ads, employer brand, your support, I guess what you want to do is reflect internally, first of all, and look at what policies and benefits do we have that make us an attractive place to work? And how do those compare against our competitors in the same industry? Um, 
the good thing is we have an HR benchmarking tool. So you can go in, enter in your policies, and this is all free, and see where you rank compared to competitors. So um, I would recommend first and foremost benchmarking yourselves, knowing what you do well, knowing areas for improvement. And then it's about getting that messaging out there. Um, telling, if you have women in the sales roles at the moment, um, interview them, share their stories. Um, the way that we do things at Work 180 is very, very unique as well, uh, how we interview. So um, I think one of, the, um, one of the things that employers tend to do is just tell a story. Tell me why you like working at this company, um, which is very, very salesy. And um, so the way that we like to do things is really an educational piece, a professional development piece, highlighting those employees and sharing that out, which then, other people in the industry learn from, and then it's really subtle employer branding, and that drives the applications. Um, and yes, again, you know, following on from that comment was not receiving any female applications on SEEK for leadership positions. Um, not too surprising there, I guess, you know, when we look at a plat when we look at platform or we look at top talent I should say if we get into their heads they're not on platforms like seek they're um, they're doing their research they want to see that a company is serious about supporting them we've done a lot of interviews with women in senior leadership positions and one of the feedback pieces of feedback that they gave was that brand is less important to them when they're at the height of when they're at um, you know the top of their career they've been there and done it they've worked for the big brand names now what it's about is am i going to join a company where i'm going to be provided an equal opportunity i'm going to be listened to so how are you positioning yourself aligning with those things um showing that you're a great place to work showing that they're going to come and have impact and then how what platforms or channels are you using to actually get that messaging out there as well so that's really that's really important Um, another question we have here is what's your recommendation for attracting women into postal operations? So delivering on bikes or motorbikes, vans and trucks. Um, we actually find that super easy, those types of roles, um, surprisingly enough. Um, it's, it's how you target it. It's how you target the advertising and the type of advertising that you, that you use. So with, with our network, um, we've been able to, I mean, the maintenance manager for BAC is a really good example. You didn't need, but they were, they were going to train people in that particular role. So um, likewise with um, delivering on bicycles, you know, that's something that you don't need net qualifications for that they'll receive training for. So that's absolutely perfect. But the outside of how you're targeting it and the language that you're using, um, think about what those roles have to offer. Are they flexible? If they're not flexible, how can you make it flexible? Can you um, can you job share these particular roles? I mean, what are the ways that you can cast that net wider and make it accessible and attractive to as, mo um, to as many people as you possibly can? Um, So um, yeah, just a few comments around um, only receiving male resumes on other platforms. Yep, um, hopefully this this session has definitely helped. What I'll do um, super quickly um, is I'll just show you how I mentioned the um, the benchmarking piece before, um, and if you actually, it's something that you all might be interested in around how you so that you can see where your company ranks compared to other employers. So if you go onto the Work180 website, it's just work180.co, and then you go into the four employers section, the Why Work180, and then we scroll scroll down. What you'll actually see is start the HR health check. Uh, it's free. It's absolutely free to do this. You can go in, you enter your policies, what you have to offer. You're going to be generated a report, and that report then is going to tell you where you sit compared to industry. Now, when you have that report, you can take those things that you're doing really well, use them in your promotion. And 
then it's going to tell you what areas for improvement there are. And great, use that as a business case to take back to your leadership team and say, look, diversity is important to us as an employer. However, this report says that these are what other employees are doing. And unless we, um, unless we do the same, we're just not in a competitive place to attract the best talent. So that's an HR health check. I will put a link to this. We'll make sure there's a link to this so everybody has access to this post the, um, post the webinar. Um, and finally, I'll just check the questions. Um, we've still got a few minutes. Okay, lots of thank yous, that's great, excellent. All right, um, so we will wrap that up and give you back 10 minutes of your day. Thank you all so much for joining the webinar. Please feel free to connect. Um, I'm on LinkedIn. It's uh, I know it says Jenna. Uh, that's one of our team members at Work 180. I'm Gemma, Gemma Lloyd. Um, my details are actually on this page here. Um, so yeah, as I mentioned, feel free to drop me a line, uh, connect with me on LinkedIn. Thank you all for uh, for joining. Thank you. Bye.